ACC Network Spring Football presented by Geico. What better way to spend a Saturday morning than on Miami Beach and inside Hard Rock Stadium where the college football playoff concluded its season with Alabama winning the national championship. And it's where Miami will conclude its spring ball with its annual spring football game. You look at this Miami program, year three of the Manny Diaz era, so many returners coming back from a season where there were some highs, there were some lows, and there is now some optimism coming into the season. Chris Butt caught up with Manny Diaz just moments ago. Coach, a warm Miami day to wrap up spring. What do you hope to get out of today? Really excited to see our two young quarterbacks, Tyler Van Dyke and Jake Garcia, have uh, both had outstanding springs. Um, we get a chance to put a little pressure on them today with, with you all being here and a national TV audience and, and want to see how they respond. We get a chance to see you in your new role for the first time calling plays for the defense. How has that been this spring? It's been a lot of fun. Uh, it, it's, it feels natural, you know. I've done that for a long time in my career. Um, today will we'll be real basic today. Just want to see them run and tackle. Good deal. I appreciate it, Coach. Okay, thank you. And with that, welcome in Matt Berry, Mike Golick Jr. alongside. Looking forward to seeing this Miami Hurricanes football team. And Golick Jr., you did spring football at Notre Dame probably more than you wished you did. When you go into a spring football game situation as a player, what are you trying to get out of it? Matt, it's twofold. You're trying to put on display in front of this TV audience, in front of your coaches, all the technique you've been working on over the course of spring ball. But then there's also something this Miami team's going to deal with. I dealt with a lot during Notre Dame. New coaches in new spots. How does your game day communication operate? You're getting your first look at that. That'll really help pay dividends when you get to fall camp and the upcoming season. And if you can tell by our, our backdrops, we are not in South Florida. We are hanging out here in Bristol, Connecticut. That is not a beach. That is us, and it is football time. And Golick Jr., what we're going to take a look at today, Team Hurricane, Team Ibis, the run-through is ones versus ones. So we're going to get a look at these young quarterbacks. We're going to talk about the running back battle and all of the position battles coming in of what Miami will embark on as they wrap up spring ball going into fall camp. Tyler Van Dyke, second-year freshman, big kid, big arm, saw action last year. And then if you follow recruiting and you follow college football, you know that Jake Garcia, highly touted quarterback, early enrollee for the Hurricanes. We are excited to see both of these young men play this afternoon. And we know getting this opportunity because of the injury to Derek King in the cheese it Bowl, these two young players have a great chance to impress their staff and their teammates. And it's gonna be Van Dyke that's gonna get the run with the ones early on. Mike Harley, the receiver. Tackled on play by Gervin Hall. And if, if, if you're looking for some Rocky Road ice cream with the play calling today, you're, you're going to get a lot of vanilla, is what Rhett Lashley told us. Just some good, solid plays to kind of get in the flow of what the offense is trying to do. It's Van Dyke again. He's going to look deep on second and 12, falls incomplete. And that intended for the Oklahoma transfer, Charleston Rambo. We'll get into his story throughout the afternoon. If you want to know the rules of the spring game, they are as follows. Team Hurricane, Team Ibis, ones versus one. One offense, one defense, twos versus twos. We were told both quarterbacks will get an opportunity to run with the ones. Right now it is Van Dyke. And our points are going to be awarded for offensive scores only. Although, if there is a pick six, sack, scoop, and score, Golik Jr., we're not going to take points away from the defense. Uh, uh, thankfully, avoiding a tradition unlike any other, which is wonky spring game scoring systems. I've had enough points awarded for fumble recoveries and sacks. No one enjoys keeping track of that, so going to be very straightforward today for the Hurricanes. We've got a penalty early on against Tyreek Stevenson. We'll tell his story. The transfer in from Georgia. The transfer portal, again, very friendly for Manny Diaz in the Hurricanes. This Jalen Knighton off the right side, tackled on the play by Keontra Smith. And outside of the quarterback matchup that we're watching today, Matt, I think talking to Rhett Lashley and this staff, the running back room is gonna be a real spot circle for everyone heading into fall camp. Can they establish an every down back, a bell cow for this group? Van Dyke quickly outside to Knighton. Knighton 
nicknamed Rooster. Second year freshman, very quick, very talented, can come out of the backfield, he can play receiver. He's another one of those players, and you just hit on it, the running back room, Cam Harris is the veteran. We will not see Donald Chaney Jr., who's out with injury, and there are a lot of people within this program that believe Chaney Jr., perhaps the most talented of the lot, but they also want to find themselves in every down running back to emerge coming into fall camp. Dyke, a quick look outside. Another flag on the play. And this is really what you're looking to avoid as we come and you talk about goals for a spring game. Holding. Offense, number 60. 10 yard penalty. Still first down. And that's big Zion Nelson, the left tackle. When we talked about depth, we've already gotten into the running back room. But this offensive line room, your wheelhouse, loves where they are coming in and how they've performed in the spring workouts. They're eight deep Van across Dyke the board. Quick throw to Xavier Restrepo, one of the young receivers that has also turned some heads early on in camp. Mike, go ahead on the O-line. Yeah, they're eight deep up front. They feel like they've got a lot of guys that they can count on, that they can trust to roll through there. For them, it's just gonna be a matter of this spring game's the perfect spot. Can you all execute post-snap what you're seeing pre-snap? When you look back at last year, the game against Clemson, against North Carolina, that's where this group got to trouble. The efforts there, the communications there, it's gotta be execution they improve on. Another flag on the play, that caught by D. Wiggins. Offside. Defense, number two, five-yard penalty. Replay second down. There are storylines with every team coming out of their spring workouts. That again, Stevenson on the penalty, his second early on in the scrimmage. And Mike, based on what we know about Miami and their depth at the right positions, this will be discussed throughout the afternoon. And this is a team that's ready to pop. They've got everything you need, depth at the right positions, caught by Mike Harley, where they, they're ready to go. They are, and I think the biggest difference you're seeing now is the recruiting is starting to catch up. In this last cycle, ranked as high as 11th in the 2021 recruiting class. We mentioned Jake Garcia, a big get there. They've got some big timers. Leonard Taylor on the defensive side, five-star defensive tackle. When you start to build up that quality depth, that's what we see at these top programs that make that push from good to college football playoff consistent every year. That's where Miami starts to find themselves. Van Dyke now third and four. Pressure can't hit the quarterback at spring ball. But a good strike and a throw caught by Harley. That'll move the chains. First down. And I'm sure that will be one that defensive players in the meeting room after contest. Because like you said, you can't touch the quarterback, but when you get close, that sack call is usually at the coach's discretion. We figured Manny Diaz being the play caller on defense might give him a little love, but first down. Jafar I. Harvey was on the pressure. He's a name that we've kept hearing throughout the spring. One of those defensive linemen in a, in a school that prides itself on a pass rush. The redshirt freshman that's, that's another player, Mike, that they have a lot of hope for uh, coming out of spring work. Right. Right. A free play for Van Dyke, caught by Gervin Hall, but early movement on the defensive side of the ball. Already a little bit too much yellow for Manny Diaz and this staff. Again, Offside. you're trying to come out and put on a defense number 96. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. And Matt, you'll notice right here, every offensive line school of thought's different on these plays, but this is a freeze up front. This group being taught, as many across the country are, minute that D lineman jumps offside, you're staying put, kind of rattles everyone up front on the defensive side, and your quarterback and receivers know it's scramble time, it's a free play to go. Always, always strange to me. I was a head tapper. Oh, oh, the fake to Cameron Harris. Van Dyke over the middle, intended for Restrepo, falls incomplete. Let's 
You had mentioned no De'Aaron King in this one. We'll talk to him during the broadcast, rehabbing from that torn ACL. Very important. As Rhett Lashley told us, and more movement out of the defensive side of the ball, Lashley told us this week that it is important for them to understand Van Dyke. He Offside. got some work last year. Defense, number 81, with contact. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Jake Garcia, we'll see him in a moment, but getting reps for your other quarterbacks, a blessing and a curse. You know what you're getting out of De'Aaron King. What are you gonna get from that next guy up who eventually, one of these players, Mike, is gonna be the future of the program? Exactly, and Tyler Van Dyke has gotten some snaps in some game opportunities, but now his chance to really go out here and operate like the starter. When we talked to Rhett Lashley, he even said presence-wise, he's not a super vocal leader. He's a lot like De'Ara King in that way, where it's his presence, it's the way he carries himself. A leader by example in these situations, and now he gets to go out and operate the mechanics of this offense with work with the ones. Those valuable reps pay off so big, even if your ultimate end is being the backup this fall. Tyreek Stevenson, he, he had a busy drive that drive. He had a couple penalties and a pass break up there. Comes in from UGA. What if, what if three transfers coming in for Manny Diaz? We'll detail some of those guys and how they can contribute right away. And the kick is on the way. It is good. And so early points for Team Hurricane. We saw Tyler Van Dyke, the star true freshman, Jake Garcia, coming up next. Walter, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what do you... You'll see a similar shirt between all the coaches here on the sidelines. They are wearing this black t-shirt with a picture of Howard Schellenberger on it to remember the late great coach who passed away earlier this year, who brought the Miami Hurricane team, resurrected them, brought them a national championship in 1983. So coaches all wearing this t-shirt, a similar patch is also a decal on the back of the helmets as well this season, guys. Chris, thank you. To a man, there is no Miami football without the late, great Howard Schnellenberg of the National Championship, as Chris said, 1983. Famously built the wall around South Florida to bring in arguably some of the most talented rosters in college football history. <laughs> and so Team Hurricane three nothing, score relevant, play is. Back after this, we'll take a look at Jake Garcia. If you want to be a winner, then get a turkey footlong from Subway. That's oven roasted turkey. Happy to be with you for the Miami Spring football game. You were looking there at number 13, Jake Garcia, highly touted quarterback recruit, highest recruit quarterback-wise to come to Miami since Kyle Wright back in the early 2000s. And Golick Jr., to say that Jake Garcia had an interesting journey through high school is, is, is putting it, that's a little bit uh, not accurate with what he had to deal with to go through high school. Uh, incredible obviously you see started his career in California and then because of the pandemic they weren't playing football out there and so ends up making the trek to Georgia to play at Grayson High School and this coaching staff really thinks it gives him a level of maturity now walking in here as an early enrollee to good himself into a new situation and immediately take hold and grasp the offense the way that he has so far this spring there's Isaiah Caswell on the carry so we'll get a look at Garcia for the first time today. Coaches have raved about him in the early part of spring. Said he's the more vocal of the quarterbacks in the quarterback rooms. Garcia going to throw right away. It is high, incomplete. Intended for Michael Redding. You see right there, just a little high on the throw, but it, fearless in the way he cuts it loose and you mentioned the way he addresses his teammates they told us he's not afraid to speak up to older players and, and Matt I play with a lot of guys that early enrolled came in as a freshman that's a daunting scenario so for him to already have that confidence as we see Garcia right there Garcia able to climb the pocket caught by Keyshawn Smith look when you look at the, the quarterback rankings with recruited if you follow it which we do it was the number two pocket passer in the country kind of scoffs at that label and says, hey, look, if, if I can get up and make guys miss and use my feet if I want to. And that was a good example of it there. 
that was a good example of it there. It's also a good example on the sideline of a freshman with a nationally televised game now with the bright lights in Hard Rock Stadium holding on the ball for a little bit longer. You see Rhett Lashley, their offensive coordinator, imploring him, go ahead and cut it loose on time when you've got it available. That's the kind of thing, the value you can find in this spring game scrimmage setting. So a quick three and out for the Garcia squad. Today to get to the ACC's NCAA Men's Soccer Automatic Qualifying Match. Tonight, ACC Network and the ESPN app. Number one, Pittsburgh takes on number four, Clemson. At historic Riggs Field, coverage starts 7 p.m. Eastern. to Van Dyke and Team Hurricane. Second year coordinator, Rhett Lashley, kind of smiled at us when we, when we asked him earlier in the week about all of the weapons he has to play with offensively. The receiving core is deep. Mike Harley, Mike Pope, Restrepo, a good young guy, D. Wiggins, and then, of course, Charleston Rambo after a remarkable 2019 campaign that included a playoff berth for Oklahoma coming in. Asking you shall receive, that's Rambo to the outside. And when you consider the running back room, we won't see Will Mallory today. The tight end room is thin. Mike, at least from an offensive perspective, Miami needs to be very optimistic about where they are. They do, and the key word for them going into next season, and we heard it from Rhett Lashley over and over again, is explosive. And that's where they think, as you pointed out, Charleston Rambo can be a big help for them, help take the top off these defenses here. You see their yardages, their offensive ranks from last year in the ACC, and that's where they feel like the big difference can be. Minimize mistakes and uh, negative plays behind the line of scrimmage, and then find a way to see if Charleston Rambo can be the guy he, way he has in scrimmages so far. So we'll see a third and long for Van Dyke. Harris, the man in motion. Van Dyke looks over the middle, quick throw, and early on establishing some chemistry with Rambo. Attack it on the play by Amari Carter. On time, clean pocket up front. These are all the things. You want it to be clean because we talked about it. It's going to be vanilla play calling here. You're going to work through the RPO packages. You're going to keep it short, coming out of the quarterback's hands. Try and get him going early, especially into this second series now. A great look there, ultimately short and no punt. There's a, a center and a punter. We're not going to do punt block team today in the spring game. We're just going to let him rip it. It's kind of a driving range situation for the punter. <laughs> just get one off. Get one out there, it's gonna go into the end zone. Tyreek Stevenson, he was deep to receive the punt. Head coach Manny Diaz, a third season here at Miami, going back to what he knows best, calling defensive plays. Four new coaches on the defensive side of the ball, perhaps most notable Jess Simpson coming back for a two-year stint uh, in the NFL with the Falcons. He's the assistant head coach, and he'll be coaching the defensive line. And I bet the transfer portal. In a Manny Diaz era, 13, transfer portal guys three more coming in and you're looking at guys that can contribute right away rambo we had a tennessee transfer on the defensive side of the ball along the defensive line deandre johnson and then tyreek stevenson coming in from georgia mike those are guys that are immediately expected to come in and contribute you're expected to come in with a level of maturity, and we've seen it, to your point, very recently. Quincy Roche, Jalen Phillips, all these players, Bubba Bolden, who we'll see back in the secondary this fall, coming over and immediately giving a veteran presence to some talented position groups. So here's Garcia again, quick throw to the left side, caught by Mark Pope. 
And Matt, just going back to those transfer players, what you heard all of these guys talk about to a man was understanding and seeing what happened for Jalen Hill Phillips, Quincy Roche, and saying, we know this can be a pipeline to the NFL, especially at positions at Miami, like defensive end and wide receiver, where there's a rich tradition of guys going from here to Sundays. Jalen Phillips came in from UCLA. Quincy Roche came in from Temple. Both of them were hear their names called early in the NFL draft. We'll talk about those guys coming up in the half with Jim Nagy, one of our NFL draft analysts. When you put a football uniform on at Miami, next expectation for the type of talent they get here is the NFL. And we'll see that again this year as Garcia again does a nice job climbing the pocket. And Dante Johnson on the receiving end of that one. Early movement on the offensive line, going to be a false start on them. Full start. Offense, number 67. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Gavin Adams. Matt, when you talk about that first time seeing the logo on the helmet, getting to big time college football, Jake Garcia said he was talking with his father, Randy, who was also a college quarterback at Nebraska. And he said, when you get to these big time programs and you're a young player and you step out there and all of a sudden it becomes real as we see a great shot by him over the middle to Mark Pope connecting deep downfield. You have that moment of realization, that kind of welcome to college football moment, and then very quickly, you've got to realize and tell yourself, all right, I'm here for a reason. I'm a big time recruit the way Jake Garcia is, and you're gonna try and slow that down as quick as you can and make it real. Brought down in the play by Cam Kitchens. He's one of the early enrollees, another player out of the highly touted 2021 recruiting class. And when you, when you look at Garcia, it is such a trend now in college football. Try to get out, get in early, early enrollee, learn the offense, get an offseason, make some changes to your body. Garcia seems to have everything you want in a future star quarterback. You ask the coaches what makes him special. Accuracy. First thing everybody says, talks about his accuracy. That's a quick look out there. The big hit. What a hit by Team Hurricane. That was Keyshawn Washington. The ruling on the field is a fumble, recovered by the defense. First down. Disaylen like the this. one on the receiving end of this. And just a little wide receiver bubble screen on the other side. And Coming in, keeping his head out of the play right there. We know no one's going to call targeting in a spring game, but uh, Matt, this is really one of those spots, too, where you also have to remember we're all on the same team. We're all trying to make sure we get out of this healthy as you go in and make an impression here. This is different from when you get to the fall. This is making sure we take care of our teammates and get everyone to the summer phase of this, get everyone to fall camp healthy. So Isaiah Dunson was able to recover the fumble. And listen, Miami, when they're at their best, they're playing defense. Manny Diaz knows that. A couple of years ago when they had that remarkable pass rush, one of the best defenses in the country. And they hope to get back to that point. We hope you stay around ACC Network today. Men's lacrosse, center stage, North Carolina. The Carrier Dome to take on number nine, Syracuse. That at three Eastern on ACC Network. We now see Garcia getting more reps, now running with the ones. We were told we'd see this. Garcia looking deep, has a receiver open, caught, then dropped. That was D. Wiggins. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. And anyone within the Miami program will tell you consistency out of the wide receivers is what got them a year ago and D Wiggins one of those players trying to put last year behind him to be more consistent with catching the football and say these drops 
are the thing because on the other end, you look at what happened in the pocket there for Jake Garcia. A great job sliding to avoid pressure, keeping his eyes downfield, and letting one ride. Those are the explosives they're looking for. Right on the money to Rambo, who has had his name called quite frequently early on. And again, Garcia, he makes a decision quick. He zips it and finds a guy. Three in a row, and again to Rambo. And Matt, we know this is spring football. Manny Diaz is not dialing up the usual exotics you'll see from a Miami defense that's going into an actual game. But for what this setting is, seeing Jake Garcia, the confidence, the quickness, the decisiveness, and connecting with Charleston Rambo, Canes fans got to be very excited right now. And Rambo able to make a few men miss. So if you're Alabama, Nick Saban, they've got some spring football to deal with on their own, but that's who opens up with Miami. That's gonna be a good game, Alabama and Miami to open the season. Very familiar with Charleston Rambo. You're gonna be familiar with him this afternoon because Mike, with, with the weapons that they have in the backfield and the depth that they have at receiver, if Rambo is the Rambo of 2019, that is frightening. You got Mike Harley coming back, who's doing a good, great job being your reliable slot player. As right on Caught. cue, he gets them down closer. I think that's a touchdown from Mike Harley. It is, touchdown, Mike Harley, Jake Garcia. What a drive out of the true freshman quarterback, getting back-to-back -back reps, came in with the ones. Found Charleston Rambo a number of times, and then here a good look to Mike Harley for a score. And that drive, they went with the hurry up. It almost mimicked the two minute drill tempo wise. And sometimes that, Matt, for a young player, for an early enrollee true freshman coming in is a great way to settle down, get you to just go out there and play loose, play with what you know. Garcia started the game with Team Ibis, came over to Team Hurricane. Said, you know what? I'm going to score for the other guys. The betrayal. Matt, how about over on the sideline, the look at these Zuba shorts. Style on display for this spring game. Come on, early 90s fashion. Go back to the heyday of the U. Just bring it. So Jake Garcia, Tyler Van Dyke, both competing for the backup job. With De'Eric King getting injured in the Cheez-It Bowl against Oklahoma State, tearing his ACL. This was just after King announced that he was going to be coming back for the 2021 season. We will talk to D'Eric today on the broadcast. We've also been told he's going to call ball plays coming up in the fourth quarter of this one. And that's been the key for him, Mike, is keeping D'Eric involved this spring when he's unable to participate and play with his teammates. Tradition unlike any other of a player rehabbing a lower body body injury hitting the gym for the upper body hard But he's been a huge asset for this quarterback room too. the coaches have said in practice They'll say hey you take Jake today and they know he's gonna go over there He's gonna help coach up the younger players in this room and help get his backup ready that veteran presence Having a guy who came over here already with a bunch of great football under his belt been invaluable for this hurricane program and Matt, we don't got to tell everyone what he happens when he gets on the field. Few players in college football going to bend a defense the way that this guy does. Throughout our coverage of the season a year ago, we would we would talk ad nauseum. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, and myself would be doing college football final or something in the studio on Saturday. There wasn't a better marriage with an instant quarterback and offensive coordinator than King and Lashley. And we saw that early on with how those two were able to kind of just blend together and make Miami in the early part of the season a real threat in the ACC. They won three in a row before that loss to Clemson. Then they ra you know, railed off five wins in a row. And they're close. And they expect King to be back in time. We'll ask him about that. But certainly with what they have with the Eric King coming back as Van Dyke's going to sling one downfield. It is dropped by Mark Pope, another one of the receivers that we talk about consistency coming into the season. Disappointing there for Pope now, probably 
Going to have a nice conversation with himself on the sideline to try and reel things in here early on in this game. But you're right about King, and, and I think we need to remind everyone, this time last year, Miami got through four spring practices with their new offensive coordinator and new quarterback before they got going and everything was shut down with the pandemic. So they're all really just getting a chance to stop, catch their breath, and get this kind of work in, even if it's mental reps for King. Another spring meeting with Lashley and this offensive staff. Going to pay dividends for them this fall. It is something to keep an eye on throughout college football. I mentioned numerous spring games taking place today. LSU having theirs, Ohio State playing a little football. To be able to have that full complement of 14 spring workouts, not only invaluable for the players, but when you have a coordinator situation where he's coming in new, Miami's got four new coaches on the defensive side of the ball, getting those in-person reps and practices and installations is huge because once you hit fall camp, Mike, you're getting into a different side of football that you weren't detailing in the spring. It, Matt, it's so true. In Notre Dame, I went through a head coaching change. I had four position coaches in five years, which meant every spring was a getting to know you phase. And so even for Jess Simpson, who knows this place well, still a time to get that communication rattled up, dialed up, and ready to go. 10 nothing for Team Hurricane at the end of the first quarter. years ago the nutrition staff here really wanted to focus on recovery so they cut up fruit for the players they realized what the players really wanted were mangoes they wanted to make things that well the players would eat except the players asked the staff can you get us some seasoning on it that's how we like things down here in Miami so I'm gonna show you it's a little different but this is how the majority of the players down here in the 305 take their post practice mango slice mango Vinegar, guys. All right, so cooking with Chris in a minute. That's Isaiah <laughs> Caswell breaking off a big run. All right, Chris, get us back to the mango madness. What do you got down there? How do they take that? The key, so we poured the vinegar. Now we got lemon pepper. This is the one that really threw me for a loop. So you put the lemon pepper. Some people also add some salt. That whoa, was a lot whoa. of lemon pepper. Heavy on the lemon pepper. Whoa. What are you doing? <laughs> this is when you do things with your left hand. Shake it up. Obviously, now I have to try it. Oh, the live taste test. Good luck. Here we, right, Chris. Here we go. The lemon pepper is strong. And like it hits you right at Peppery. the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> the vinegar is not so bad. It's the it's the pepper. It's not bad. It grows on you. You get like a, a wasabi-like sinus cleanse there. The players love this, though. I was talking with Mike Harley, and he said, I had mango trees in my backyard. I just go pick one up, slice it up. He adds his with a little extra sugar, salt, and black pepper on it. But the players rave about it. Some of the new guys that come in, like a Rambo, they're like, what is this? But they, they eventually teach them the ways. So vinegar, lemon pepper. That's Restrepo off the right side. So, Chris, because you just ate a mango, uh, low in calories, but particularly high in vitamin C, uh, iron absorption may support heart health. Better than what Golik and I are eating back in Bristol. Pastries. Matt, I can tell you without hesitation, I did not have mango trees in my backyard at my apartment in South Bend, Indiana. What kind of fruit do you guys grow out there in South Bend? Whatever they had at the Martin's grocery store right there. <laughs> Whatever they were serving there in the deli on that side. But if it's working, listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And with the amount of team speed on this Miami squad, maybe I need to look into some mango. Getting some good reps here out of Isaiah Caswell. Again, Don Chaney Jr. Not playing today with an injured shoulder. Van Dyke, a fake over the middle, intended for Restrepo. Cameron Kitchens, early in a roll, Lee. That's safety room. When you look at the safety room here at Miami as well, Bolden's not playing today. He's got some injury issues. But the depth, I think that's the one word we've heard a lot out of the Miami coaching staff coming in is depth. And safety is yeah, another excited. one of those positions. Cameron Kitchens, Keyshawn Washington, they're excited about all these players, but Bubba Bolden made no bones about it, saying, we know the guys that are going to be out there. It's going to be him. It's going to be Amari Carter. They've got great veteran players, as we see Restrepo get in the end zone. Yeah, that's Van Dyke to Xavier Restrepo. So quarterback for quarterback going back and forth. 
Restrepo. One of the young receivers worked his way into this rotation. Does he get that right foot down? He indeed Ooh. does. Kind of one of those little slot receivers. 5'10", 196 pounds. Good footwork, good hands. And look, we've been, what did we say early on? Consistency with Mark Pope, consistency with D. Wiggins. We haven't seen Restrepo drop one yet. That's a sign that the coaches can trust a young player who's stepping up and another good drive for Van Dyke who led a field goal drive early on and a touchdown drive there. So we'll see if Jake Garcia comes back out of Van Dyke, but a good throw there to Restrepo. And some offensive fireworks for Miami. Do you have a dark garage that it doesn't mean anything because the quarterback that started for Team Ibis just scored a touchdown for Team Hurricane and the team that started for Team Hurricane scored a touchdown for Team Ibis. It's, we're, we're just going to talk ball here in Miami's spring football game. All right, we welcome you back to ACC Network's spring football presented by Geico. That's Tyler Van Dyke. Saw him lead a nice little touchdown drive there. He was the backup last year, saw action. And Jake Garcia trying to win that st uh, backup quarterback job. And, and, and Brett Lashley was honest with him. He said, look, this thing's open. I know Van Dyke's got the game experience, but we're going to run him out there so you can win it. And Matt, the one thing we also need to remind everyone is as exciting as spring football can be, especially right now, this is the first look. It's been closed practices because of the pandemic. This is our Miami fans' first look at what will be the 2021 team. It's also a reminder, you're not winning and losing jobs in the course of spring football. You're earning no. reps for the fall. It's going to be a completely different rotation when you get Derek back in the mix for some of those fall reps. But it's a great chance to catch a coach's eye and earn more reps for the upcoming phases of all. There is no question as Jake Garcia comes back in a blessing and a curse. You don't want your star quarterback with an ACL, but you get reps for the young quarterbacks. As Cam Harris, the veteran of that backfield, gets some good chunk yardage on first down. But this is throughout today. This is through today when you look at the numbers. Van Dyke, 11 to 16, 67 in the touchdown. And then Jake Garcia really in that last drive fighting Ken, uh, Charleston Rambo, 10 to 13, 105. And a touchdown, but again, it's it's repetition. It's building confidence. Garcia to the right again to Rambo. And Matt, it's the double-edged sword when it's your team on your team in spring football because this is a team defensively replacing a lot of talent up front on that defensive line. We already mentioned Jeff Simpson back in his role as defensive line coach after two years with the Atlanta Falcons, and so. You're trying on one side to go out here, get some stops, see if you can find new guys to create splash plays, while also Look seeing this from your offense. By Garcia to Mark Pope. I mean, I look, I, we're not hyperbole people, but again, this, this is what we've heard about the kid all spring. We have, and a great bounce back moment for Pope, who had a couple of drops earlier, but this is now the second or third time we've seen Garcia step up, maneuver the pocket well, and cut loose a beauty of a deep ball. Cam Harris, the ball carrier. Nothing going, DeAndre Johnson. Tennessee transfer. And Johnson had to battle his way back in shape. Had some COVID protocol things he was dealing with early, but at Miami, the goal is to find the next great pass rusher and who will that be on the defensive side of the ball that's what questions they want answered and again cam harris he had injury issues late in the season he burst onto the scene early on corey flag on the tackle flag has had a remarkable spring along with avery huff and the one thing that they want to solidify, perhaps more than any on the defensive side of the ball this year, is stopping the run. Garcia to the end zone, tipped and nearly picked. That was Tyreek Stevenson on the pass breakup. 
Matt, those rushing numbers dire. And we talked to Manny Diaz being able to stop the run. And I heard Kirby Smart talk about this from Georgia the other day. Being able to stop the run with your players up front, the way Miami's used to, slashing D linemen, getting guys into the backfield, always leading the country in tackles for loss, allows you to commit more resources to defending the pass, which we know, especially in this conference, a huge part of what you're going to see from the Clemsons, from the North Carolinas of the world. Tell you what, tell you, what you are going to say, another Borgalis kicking balls for Miami. This is the brother Andres Borgalis. Number two kicker coming out of high school. like the Borgallis family does, you can make the field goals. So that's scoring drive for Jake Garcia. More Miami football after this. Earlier, that's Andre Borgallis, the younger brother of Jose, who was part of the Miami Hurricane team last year, went on to win the Lou Groza Award. Jose and the family here today to watch as the kicking between the story of them just from a childhood of how they got started, moved here from Venezuela. Jose told me when he was nine years old, they went to the park and he saw people kicking a weird football. He's like, what is that? And they go, this is American football. Would you want to play? And that's how he got started. Jose was nine. Andre was five years old. The two have always been incredibly close, very competitive, which has made each other better. Jose has really tried to work on the mental side of Andre's game to know what it was like to kick in those big situations. Jose also told me, listen, if we're the same age, Andre's the better kicker than I am. Jose on his way to the NFL, maybe his younger brother on his way to Miami stardom as well, like his older brother, Borgallis. And here's what I love about a young kicker, same last name, Golik Jr. He's got to earn his teammates' trust right away. He got an opportunity to do that in spring workouts. Spring football is a chance to create situations. And I read the other day that in practice, they set him up with one of these opportunities. They said, all right, Andre, go and nail this kick in practice, and we're going to give the rest of the team off sprints. You always incentivize it to get the rest of the team hooting and hollering. And he missed it. And what the coaching staff said was his response told them a lot about this player. Came out in the next scrimmage, nailed all three of his field goal attempts, including a 50-yarder. That's what you want to see from a young player. That's the mental side his brother Jose was talking about. That the first look at Peyton Matoka. And his first pass is picked off. And they actually ruled, they ruled it incomplete. Is Isaiah Dunson on the coverage. So Peyton Matoka, another player in that quarterback room, getting some reps here in the spring game. Another quarterback out of Houston between him and De'Aaron King. They got to know all the good spots about there. Sure, a lot of great turkey leg hut discussions in that room. 6'4, 200. You mentioned. Derek King transferring in, a transfer portal story we hit on early. He's been very, very beneficial for Manny Diaz. That's where he found his star quarterback, at least early on in this spring game, Charleston Rambo, who transferred in from Oklahoma. He looks every bit of a part. Tyreek Stevenson comes in from Georgia with a flag on the play. And that's where we are in college football. Whether you like it or not, whether the coaches like it or not, Ball be placed in spot of the foul, automatic, first down. Mike, the reality of the situation is a lot of rosters are not only built but completed right now via the transfer portal. It's a great opportunity to fill in some of those gaps, especially as you have players leaving early, which is the goal if you're recruiting well. And after we saw the news from the NCAA Division I Council the other day about the one-time transfer rule that's going to get ready to go into effect, this is going to be the norm. And so the best staffs in college football will be great at not only keeping their own players around, making sure they feel like this is a place you want to come back for your fourth year, for your fifth year, but also being a place that looks like hospitable ground, the way Miami has become with transfer players to give them an opportunity at the next level. I've spoken with some coaches around college football about just that, the one-time transfer rule and the transfer portal. And in, in, in we talk about how well and good it is to be able to add a star player to your roster, but perhaps the most difficult situation, if you're in a position battle, let's call it here at Miami, a position battle for the offensive line. When this team really believes that they have about 
seven to eight really quality offensive linemen. If you're in one of those position battles and you lose the position battle in fall camp, you know that you can just answer the transfer portal and go somewhere else. And so it has created second opportunities, but it also has created a problem with kids. If they don't win that starting job, perhaps they'll look elsewhere. Matt, anytime you've got changes, anytime you've got something new popping up, the pendulum's gonna swing wildly, and then eventually I think it's going to correct. You'll probably see an influx of that early on, but then you'll see, especially now, because the other thing we're dealing with post-pandemic is that extra year of eligibility. You're seeing 60-year seniors on these rosters a little more frequently than you used to. That's all going to create a difficulty in wherever you go in trying to get time on the field. So I think like anything else, it's gonna swing for a while, and then it's gonna correct to something a little more manageable for everyone involved. It'll be a uh, challenge, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, next Thursday night, Kelsey Riggs, Mark Rick, and Mark Herzlin going to be joined by ACC head coaches for their take on whether soon-to-be draftees will find success in the NFL. That's the huddle. Coverage starts 9 Eastern, ACC Network, and the ESPN app. Draft coming up April 29th with the transfer portal. Coaches will, will tell you, and they're, they're honest with you, about the, the bonuses and, and the blessing and the curse, the minuses of what there is with, with the transfer portal. But a lot of people quick to point out, Mike, that when you, when you enter, you're not guaranteed a second home. There are players that are in the transfer portal right now, if you go and look, that started games last year at a high level. And they still have no home. They don't have another college to go to. You'll start to see some of those slots filled this summer after spring workouts. But it's as risky for the player as it is for a coach to perhaps take someone coming out of the portal. Absolutely. It's always going to be a part of the process. But it matters someone who played the game at this level and played it for a while there, saw teammates, had my younger brother who ended up doing a grad transfer year at Cincinnati. I'm all for things that give players options and opportunities. I think that's always going to be a net positive for the game. An opportunity there for Jalen Knight, and we saw him squarely in the conversation to win that running back job. Jafari Harvey on the tackle. Matt, we've seen up front this offensive line starting to open up some holes in the run game. And we talked to Rhett Lashley, their offensive coordinator, about the strides this group made last year. And it's still a work in progress. If you look at the tackle for loss numbers, the sack numbers still near the bottom of college football. But across the board, you see Zion Nelson, really talented guy who settled in well in his role at left tackle. Corey Gaynor, they're excited to get Navon Donaldson back, who missed uh, all but two games last year after rehabbing an offseason injury. This is a group that needed to get stronger this offseason. You saw that show up on tape sometimes. And now, I think just needs to get better at executing post-snap what they see pre-snap. Garen Justice, their offensive line coach, did a lot of great work at UNLV. It has a lot to be excited with this group. They are developing and moving in the right direction coming off the 2020 season. You had mentioned Donaldson. That's like getting a new player back. He was a freshman All-American back in 2017. Highly tatted recruit. Trimmed down a little bit. Leader of this offensive line. But if you get Donaldson back in the form that you got him in 2017. I mean, what a gift that is up front. We've been told offensive linemen only given up two sacks and 100 scrimmage snaps coming in. Music to Golden Jr.'s ears. You build this thing up front and back, and Miami's done that. They have, and you see great contests down the field by the defense. But you're right. You look at that right guard spot. You see Donaldson. You look at the left guard spot and see Jalen Rivers, a guy who they're excited about, might be the best athlete in this offensive line group, former four-star prospect out of high school. So I, I just think when you look, there's a lot of potential there, and now it's on them as a group to continue to put it together as a team. We'll see what they do scheme-wise, too. They ran a lot of inside zone last year, tried to move people that way. Maybe they get a little more east and west, give some of these talented backs lanes to work with. Van Dyke over the middle, caught by Pope. A play ago, you saw the pass breakup by Avante Williams. He was the number one safety coming out of high school in 2020. He missed all of last season. There's a look at him there, but he's yet another one of those highly recruited guys. Didn't see him, now getting an opportunity. When some of these recruiting classes take, 
the talent back on the roster and the field for the Hurricanes is Miami talent that this program should be getting year in and year out. Avante Williams was an absolute signing day steal for the U back in 2020, picking them over Florida. And the veteran defensive backs, Bubba Bolden and company, talked about working with him more on tackling with his head up, doing things to help make sure that he can stay on the field long term. And that kind of iron sharpens iron mentality is exactly what spring ball is for. He'd be a great addition to that deep defensive backfield this fall. First time we've called Keyshawn Smith's name. Second year freshman out of San Diego. And, and, and Bolden was honest. He said, look, this kid could be one of the most talented safeties in this program. You see Jalen Knight and the Rooster taking it off the left side for a touchdown. And there's that breakaway speed they love about Knight. And a big carry for him and another offensive score. Did it with the shoe untied also. And you see just an outside zone play captures the edge. Poor angle coming from the secondary, but that's the kind of ability they're looking for here. They want an every down back, and don't get it twisted. There's plenty of carries to go around. Lassen reminded us that at Auburn, Trey Mason might have been their feature back, but his backup had over 700 yards, and that's exactly the foundation they want for this team. And that was the story Lastly told us back when he was the offensive coordinator at Auburn a few years back with Trey Mason. Extra point on the way and good. So lastly, we'll tell you the one thing that makes his offense go is running game, rushing attack. And last year, again, we saw Cam Harris. He was the leader early on, had some injuries. De'Aaron King, we know, is a quarterback, but you look at what he did. 538 rushing yards, that was second best on the team. And Donald Chaney Jr., highly touted freshman, comes in. He got some looks, as did Jalen Knight. And this is a good problem to have because all three of those running backs are highly skilled. Your quarterback is highly skilled, but it's about the consistency with which you deploy them that I think we'll see out of Miami this fall. And that's, they want to afford these guys the opportunity to get into a rhythm. We always hear this with quarterbacks to give them that chance. But as we talked to Rhett Lashley, he mentioned running backs. You're looking and trying to find your spots in these zone schemes. You're getting used to where the cuts come, how you're playing off your offensive linemen. And so they want to give these guys a chance to build up that work volume. And it's going to be a year, his second year, gets a full spring ball, does lastly to implement his offense with his team, with his players. You take Notre Dame out of the equation, which we will, because they were a one-year rental for the ACC. That would leave Clemson at 10 and two from a year ago, and right behind them, Miami. You just get the feeling. You get the feeling that now in year three for Manny Diaz, now in year two for Lashley, recruiting classes under their belt, some of the players electing to come back and some of the talent that they have. The ACC best to be careful because once Miami wakes up, you're talking about Clemson, Miami, and maybe eventually Florida State. It's a really good league when these guys are playing to their potential. Oh, we got a trick play in the spring game. End around to Xavier Restrepo, who's had himself a nice afternoon. If we're talking about trick plays, Matt, we need to remind everyone that De'Aaron King, while he's not playing in the game today, we'll get a chance to talk to him in a bit, is slated to call the plays in the fourth quarter. And I'm very interested if he's going to feed any of the big boys up front, get the ball in the band of his dynamic offensive line playmaker. What a great move by Dante Johnson. Make the first tackler miss with a little spin move, a little slow getting up. Truly, Matt, the rest of this is, is fun and good. That's the one thing you're trying to avoid on any spring game Saturday. Get everyone out of here healthy. Take care of each other. Hopefully, this is just something minor. Well, we, had, we had shown you at the top of the telecast some of the names that were going to be out due to some sort of injury. But watch the move here. Could land on the ball, maybe some wind. Yeah, see right at the end here. 
rolled down on. Yeah, that would probably be my guess there. Doesn't thankfully look like anything else getting twisted up, walking off under his own power right now. And should feel good about that. Some plays, some explosives are designed, Matt. Some you can credit to the offensive coordinator, but instances like that, individual effort plays are going to be the difference, especially in such a competitive league. Under a minute here in the second quarter, we will not have, you will not have a, a, a halftime that you are accustomed to. 10 minute halftime. We'll talk to Jim Nagy, ESPN NFL draft analyst with some of the Miami Hurricanes. We can expect to hear their names called in the April 29th NFL draft. Then we'll have De'Aaron King joining us in the third quarter before he calls ball plays in the fourth quarter as Garcia's pass falls incomplete, intended for Pope. Mike, what happens after spring ball? Walk us through, it varies from program to program, but what, what are you guys going through then after the spring game? Yeah, in general, after the spring game, you're gonna get a little chance to decompress. There's usually some time away from campus as class wraps up towards the end of the year and then you're right back very soon that's the one thing that's changed very much from my time is that summer calendar is expanded you want to get guys back on campus and into your off-season program that first phase in when you get back after the season the winter workouts and now the summer program where you're really starting to build your conditioning towards fall camp and those were the best times for me matt coming off of spring football because it's just you guys on campus it's a great opportunity for the team to continue to gel especially coming off a year where hopefully we can get back to more of that in-person team activities players and coaches having a chance to get to know Time each out. other the way that jake garcia is Offense. getting to know rhett lashley on the sideline right there yeah, can't hit the quarterback, but Jalar Holly got credited for a sack. Lastly, telling the young player, just get rid of the football, throw it away. I thought it was really interesting to that end for Tyler Van Dyke, Matt. He was talking about during the offseason some quarterbacks that he studied from the NFL, and he mentioned Jared Goff and Patrick Mahomes. And when he talked about what he was studying in Patrick Mahomes' games, it took me aback a little bit. It was Patrick Mahomes' ability and willingness to check the ball down to players underneath. That control, not necessarily what you'd think of in Mahomes' game, but for a young quarterback, that kind of clarity and understanding that you can get yourself out of a lot of problems just checking it down, learning from one of the best. Yeah, not every throw is going to be 30 yards on a rope. There's something to be said about living to throw another day, check it down, let the skill position players do the work. And that's perhaps the biggest growth maybe of a young quarterback. Like a Jake Garcia wants to come out and impress his coaches, and he's done that so far in this spring game. But there's also growth and knowledge of throwing, checking down, and living to play another day. So now third and long for Garcia. A quick throw. Matt, you talk about it showing up right here, checking it down. You're on the other side. You're getting near field goal range. You've got a couple of timeouts. You're in 30 seconds going to the half. These are the situations you want to create for your quarterbacks all throughout the spring. This is just another scrimmage and another opportunity for Jake Garcia here. Oh, what a great job hanging in the pocket by Garcia to find Restrepo over the middle to get a first down on fourth and long. That was a veteran quarterback throw right there. That was, and that's the kind of thing they're excited Time about. Out. You get a chance to now use one of these timeouts. And his maneuvering in the pocket, match what stuck out the most to me today. We've talked about the athleticism, we've talked about him as a pocket passer, but that ability to slide, create space, and still keep your eyes downfield, that's 200-level quarterback play. That's not what you'd expect from a guy going through his first spring, his first look at big-time college football. Ryan Ragoni applied the pressure, also held up just enough to commit the cardinal sin of a spring scrimmage, which is hit the quarterback. You probably heard every coach on the sideline screaming, stay out of the probably bleeping cylinder in that spot. It is the most common refrain throughout all of this. It starts more fights in practice than probably any other instance in football, Matt. And so that's a definite, we'll call it teaching moment there. So you guys as offensive linemen, if a defensive guy comes out, hits the quarterback in, in, in practice, you guys are, you're throwing? 
Think about a goalie in hockey, Matt. I've said the cross sports, there's a lot of great connection points. That's one of them. If someone hits your quarterback in spring ball while they've got these nice green jerseys on, there's got to be a little conversation, we'll call it after. Let's see what Garcia can do. Nine seconds left. Go! After a fourth and long conversion, again, Garcia over the middle. And that's caught by Parrott. He's got to get down so they can bang a timeout, get a field goal before going in at the half. Is there a day, like, when do quarterbacks actually play football during practice? It varies from team to team, Matt. For a team like this that dealt with an injury to their starting quarterback, I'm sure it's been rather cautious. But there are times when you want to get your defense a look. There are times where you want your quarterbacks to execute some of the zone read offense. So we'll have designated periods where the quarterbacks are live and everyone's prepared for it. But they are few and far between. That is a very, very uh, carefully guarded bunch. All right, Andre Borgalis on for the field goal attempt right before the half, 32-yarder. Off the right hash for a Dallas kick is clean. And the random scoring continues 20 to 10. As we are now at the half of the Miami spring game. We're going to take a break and we'll come back. Jim Nagy going to talk NFL hopefuls from Miami. Coming up, Miami spring football game. Mike Golick Jr., Matt Berry here on the ACC Network. More than some burritos. Oh, nice. Like Junior Matt Barry on the call, Chris Button there in the stadium. We'll get set to talk to De'Eric King in just a minute. But first, our NFL draft analyst Jim Nagy joining us here on the broadcast as we prepare for the upcoming NFL draft on April 29th. And Jim, walk us through the talent and when we can expect to hear some Miami Hurricanes names called this year. Yeah, there, there's going to be a few, uh, Matthew. Uh, I would start with. With Jalen Phillips, he, he's going to go somewhere in the first round. You know, you've heard some things about the medical red flags, but but reaching out to some guys this morning around the league uh, and ask them the question, real pointed, is he going to go still go in the first? And he will. Um, he's a ready-made guy. He's ready to make an impact. He has all the measurables, tested great at his pro day. Then you put on the tape, and he's a really active rusher. Um, he chases. He's got skill as a rusher. So he's a guy that can get on the field and have an impact at minimum in sub-downs. And that's really what you're drafting the guy to do is get to the quarterback. So I would expect uh, Jalen Phillips to come off first out of this group. And what about Rousseau? Because I know he opted out last year. Any concerns with him coming in? He's a, He had a very good 2019, but again, opted out a year ago. What do you see coming out of Gregory Rousseau? Yeah, Greg Rousseau is a really talented player, but I, I think the league's still trying to assess where he fits best. They're trying to figure him out a little bit. Um, as you referenced, the 15 and a half sacks two years ago, um, great, great production, but, you know, a, li a little bit of a different body type. He's almost six foot seven, um, but he's got those long arms, almost 35 inch arms, and he really ran well for a big guy. But he had a lot of his sacks um, a couple years ago inside against guards and from the nose position from the three technique. And teams are trying to figure out where he rushes best from. What's the most upside? There's not a lot of guys with those measurables rushing inside at the next level. So I haven't seen Greg's body type. I don't know how much, how much more weight he can handle. Uh, but if he got up to 280, maybe he is more of an inside guy. But right now, where he stands in that 265 area, um, you know, he's more of an edge player. So uh, things you can't coach are length and motor, um, and he has those things. So he's, he's going to go relatively high somewhere on day two, I would think. And finally, Quincy Roche, what are the projections for him? Yeah, Quincy's a really good football player. You know, he surprised a lot of people hitting in the four sixes in his 40. Um, but again, the more you're around him, we had him here at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, and he's kind of a sneaky athlete, twitchier than I thought he was, but really knows how to play and knows how to rush. So he's another guy that more of a depth level player. I think he's probably going to come off in that early day three area. But you just look at his track back, a high, high sack total, high character guy. Um, so again, as a guy that's going to get on the field and help in that D-line rotation year one, um, I think you're pretty confident if you're a team that Quincy can do that. Again, Miami is at its best when it's got NFL talent on the defensive side of the ball. We'll see that in the upcoming draft. Jim Nagy, ESPN NFL Draft Analyst. We know you're busy. Jim, thank you so much for spending some time with us this afternoon during the Miami spring game. Yeah, thanks, guys. 
All right, so the second half is underway if, you, if you're tuning in. Uh, it's going to be a running clock here in the second half. Uh, so get some opportunities for some of these younger guys to get some reps. We are waiting to speak to De'Eric King, who is going to call ball plays in the fourth quarter. New quarterback in now, Ryan Risk in at quarterback. Uh, the third quarterback, rather the fourth quarterback we've seen this afternoon. Also, Peyton Matoka was in earlier, along with Jake Garcia and Tyler Van Dyke. And we're being told De'Eric King has got the headset on, uh, ready to talk to us. De'Eric, Matt Barry, and Mike Golick Jr. here. First question, I think, for everyone, how was your rehab coming along? Yeah, it's going great, you know, uh, just taking it day by day, step by step. Uh, I'm working really, really hard. We have good, great people here to just, you know, doing my, a lot of good PT uh, trainers here. So um, just I got to keep working. Uh, it's a slow process, but uh, I think it's going uh, it's pretty good right now. And how's the timetable? Does that still factor in to where you'll be ready for fall camp? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, that's, that's the plan for me to be ready for camp. Um, I'm still on track right now. Uh, I, I've reached every benchmark that they set for me, so uh, just got to keep going. And we know you've kept going in spring. You've got a couple of young quarterbacks that have been out here working already today. What's it been like for you putting on your coaching hat during spring ball with these guys? Uh, it's, it's been great. You know, you get, a, you get a look at the game at a different perspective. Uh, you know, just being on sidelines and being around Coach Lashley a lot, um, I started thinking like him, you know. Um, uh, just being at practice, I'm still learning as well. I'm watching those guys. Those guys have done a really good job this spring. Um, so it's, it's been different, but it's been good. I think it's a good learning experience for me. Yeah, Derek, how much have you learned because we know you are a competitor, you want to be in the field, you want to be playing quarterback, but how much can you learn about playing quarterback and how can that benefit you with what you're doing now? Man, you can learn a lot. Um, it's never, you never know enough, you know? So I try to go every day to meetings and practice and film and try to learn as much as I can. Uh, you know, it's the second year in the office for me. Um, so I feel like I have a, a better grasp of it, a uh, grasp of it um, already. So I just got to just keep learning. Uh, Coach Lash is a great coach and just try, to, uh, just try to peep his brain a little bit and uh, it's, it's going pretty good. Second year in the offense for you, but first year in the offense for Charleston Rambo, the Oklahoma transfer who has a lot of people excited. How have you gotten to know him already, even though you haven't had much chance to work together on the field? Yeah, that's my dude right there. You know, Rambo, he, he's a Texas guy, so we already have that, that connection. Um, played against him a bunch. Um, he's, he's a great player, man. Just he, out here today, he's, he's competing his, his heart out, you know. Uh, he goes to practice every day. He works really, really hard, so I'm excited to have him on the team this year. How how hard did you recruit him to come to Miami? <laughs> uh, it, it, was, it was a bunch of text messages back and forth, a bunch of FaceTime calls, um, just, just trying to tell him this is the place where he should be, and I'm so glad he's here right now. You know, Derek, we've been talking to the first half how Miami has the depth, and you guys are ready to take that next step. What will it take for this team to take that next step to get to the top of the ACC? Man, uh, like you said, we have we have great depth on our team. We have a lot of guys come back from the past season that had an opportunity to go to the NFL. Um, so we just got we got to take the next step and, and take care of the small things. You know, I think that's the biggest thing for us all offseason. Cody has been preaching it, preaching it all offseason. Take care of the small things and the big things will happen. Um, so I, I just it's a I think we have a lot of focus this year. A lot of older guys, and we know we want we know our goals. And now we're just going out there and reaching them. The focus this fall, De'Eric, for so much of us felt like figuring out just how to operate around the pandemic. So much changed about your guys' day-to-day. -day. This spring now, a year into this process, how much better do you guys feel going about day-to-day -day life, going about practice in the middle of what's still an ongoing process with this health crisis? I, I think I think we feel better. You know, uh, last year, was, it was new to everybody. Um, everything we, we did last year as far as playing football season was totally new for coaches and players and trainers and everybody. So now I feel like we have a, a better hang of it. You know, uh, we know what to expect. You know, we get tested three, two, three times a week um, all that so I, I think it's better we, we, we just know what to know what to expect what's been the most challenging part of not being out on the field man I love competing you know I love being out there with my guys practicing hard you know working out running sprints uh, that's what you build you know team chemistry and I just hate I, I can't be out there for a lot of it but um, it's, it's gonna come you know come back in summer uh, I should be close to full go so and we're all looking forward to that. You're one of the most exciting players in college football. But before you get back to playing, you get to call some plays in yeah. the fourth quarter. So <laughs> what can we expect from De'Eric King, offensive coordinator, in this final quarter? A lot of passes. You know, I, li I like throwing the ball <laughs> around. I like throwing the ball around. But we're we going to play fast. You know, we're going to get the ball in the end zone. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. I've been studying my plays on the bus right here all last night. Uh, so I'm ready for this right now.
Now, and it's true that after your football playing career is over, you actually want to get into coaching. Yes, sir. That's the plan. Uh, my dad was a coach. Uh, this always, uh, always a, was a goal of mine to be a college coach. So, All right, so we're going to put this coaching film on tape for you. <laughs> Good but, luck. Yes, Call sir. some ball plays. We wish you the best of luck in your rehab, and we cannot wait to see you back on the field this fall. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Throw it to an O-lineman, Derek. We got course. you. We got, oh. we got one in the red zone for you. It's coming. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, see? There you go. Yes, sir. D'Eric's going to dial us up a ball play, but look, we want to see him running ball plays this Ooh. fall. One of the most electric players in college football. You take a look at his numbers, and I think what made his injury, any injury to a college football player is heartbreaking, but what made his so is he had just announced, Mike, that he was coming back this year, plays in a cheese it Bowl against Oklahoma State, and then that's when the injury occurred. It was devastating. It was one of the most heartbreaking moments of the season, Matt. And you knew what he's meant to this team. You know what he means to college football. De'Ara King's been one of the stars of this sport going back to his time at Houston. It's great to see him in such good spirits because that's the other difficult part of being injured is some of the loneliness that comes with being in the training room. But this coaching staff and this team have done a great job, like they are today, of making sure he's a part of their process. Another one of the early enrollees on that defensive tackle, Chase Smith. Want to make sure to get his name called. He's a player, young player, that they are very excited about here in Coral Gables. When you have, and, and we're having fun with it, because it's always fun when a player gets to call some plays, but when you have a quarterback who understands the offense enough to be able to lean into that responsibility when he can't play. You heard him say it, Mike. That's just getting more comfortable with the offense through a different prism. It is. It's the vantage point you see the game through. So many of us as players have this myopic view of, all right, what is my job? What are my responsibilities in this spot? But for Derek to now understand the way that Rhett Lashley is going to be seeing games this fall, to be able to come over on the sideline and advance the conversations that you're having in between series. This is what I saw, and now just remembering, anecdotally, from this small experience, I kind of have a better understanding of the way you're seeing it, and we can elevate that conversation. It's going to make for great adjustments in-game for this team later this year. One of the quarterbacks we've seen this afternoon, Peyton Matoka on. As you see, De'Eric King... Get ready to throw on a headset. Getting ready to make the quarterbacks happy. Will he make Mike Golick Jr. happy and call an offensive play for a, a, an O-lineman? But you, look, you can't just do that in the middle of the field. You need to get him down as the time ran out for Matoka. They're gonna get the defense a sack there. Elijah Roberts will get credit for it. I mean, Mike, we gotta get him down to the goal line. We're not gonna throw to your kind in the middle of the field. Listen, get down to the low red zone. It doesn't have to just be a goal line play. We talked about the depth and athleticism on this offensive line. We talked about Zion Nelson and what he's done at the left tackle spot. Athleticism is the hallmark of this group. I just want to play to the team's strengths, Matt. I, I won't apologize for that. Red zone. <laughs> Only time I'm calling one for you guys is five-yard line in. And Matoka. Climbs the pocket, gets picked off. That's Cam Kitchens. Cameron Kitchens, an early enrollee, and a true freshman out of that talented recruiting class. So good for Kitchens getting a, his name called in the spring game. We're going to hear De'Eric King and watch him call plays coming up next. If you want to be a winner, then get a turkey footlong from Subway. That's oven roasted turkey, piled high with crisp veggies on freshly baked bread. So let's. He will be calling offensive plays. We just spoke to him. He said the timetable for his return is still dead on to return in fall camp. He's one of those players, Mike, that, you know, we see sometimes a player come back from an ACL or an injury and come back better than they were before. He strikes me as that type of player. Absolutely, someone willing to attack the rehab process the way, to a man, everyone we've talked to around this Miami program has echoed. You combine that with all of the mental reps, with all the opportunities to see the game through a different lens, and you're going to have a player who, from the neck up, has improved probably just as much as he has physically honing the rest of his body. Nice throw over the middle by Matoka. In fact, his rehab was... <laughs> He's, he's taken to the rehab so intensely that the coach has had to save him from himself early on in the trainers. And like, hey, this could be a rush. Be a That's the end journey, of the third quarter. If there's anyone who can do it, it's De'Eric King. 
told us moments ago he studied his plays on the bus ride to get ready for this moment. So offensive coordinator De'Aaron King. Look at that atmosphere. Why wouldn't you want to play football in Miami back after this? Do you know what's bananas? <laughs> Dad. Food Lions double money back guarantee. If anything is in 100 percent Start of the fourth quarter of the Miami spring game. Matt Barry, Mike Golick Jr., Chris Budden on the call. You see in the huddle there, that is star starting quarterback De'Aaron King, who is rehabbing from a torn ACL. He is now calling plays here in the fourth quarter of the spring game, and he gets to call them for star freshman quarterback Jake Garcia, who has had himself a nice Saturday afternoon. If you are a Miami Hurricane fan, I think the number one takeaway from today probably after Charles Rambo and the way he's looked going downfield has been the play of your early enrollee, Jake Garcia. So Garcia, quick throw to the right side that is caught. Mark Pope. You see De'Eric there in the left. We're gonna focus on him as he's calling these in. We may have a trick up our sleeve as we approach the goal line, second and four. Okay, Golick Jr., it's set up as Garcia. He said, don't just call me a pocket passer. I can do that. He just showed his running ability. You see the O-line's been extra dialed in on this drive. Great pockets for the young quarterback. It's late in the game. These guys have been playing a lot of ball, but they're dialed in because they understand the potential that's on the line down in this area of the field. Could it be First and goal. Warrior? Garcia again flushed from the pocket. Don't hit him, they don't. Jonathan Ford, John Ford did a good job holding up. This, this is, now you've got some time to call. You do, you've got some time to settle in down here. And we know also low red zone field shrinks. So for a young quarterback, tight windows down here against the secondary. Fourth pass in a row, Garcia over the middle, intended for Restrepo. Incomplete. Now third down. Now this would be a situation, Mike, if we're gonna call a, a, a pass to an offensive lineman, they've got to announce him as eligible. Yep, you've got to make your you know, intentions known right here. This is also spring football, and I would hope that everyone on the defensive side has an understanding of what an incredible viral moment this could be for your team, should you do the right thing. Third and goal. Oh, good move. What a play by Keyshawn Smith. Nothing to it, De'Aaron King. Call plays for Garcia. Get it to Keyshawn Smith. And a touchdown and another really good drive at a true freshman, Jake Garcia. Clean is the best thing I can say about this entire sequence. From up front, we mentioned the offensive line who's got a lot of challenge in front of them this year, keeping their quarterback clean. You saw Jake Garcia move there just at the end as some trash was coming around his feet. And then the great finish there. Your OC very excited on the sideline as the kick is good. I'd say Garcia has passed his first test in a big spring game moment as he talked with Brett Lashley. More coming back fourth quarter. Miami Spring Game on the ACC Network. King was told last night that he gets to call plays this entire fourth quarter. He just engineered a uh, drive for Garcia as you look at his play calling tendencies, Mike. Not surprising, four pass, one run. And I want to be abundant. I believe that one run was a scramble by his young quarterback in Jake That's Garcia. True. So yeah. not a lot of designed rushing plays from Derek here, which to be fair, he was honest with us about when we talked to him. He said, look, all throws. Let's go down to Chris Bud. Well, Rhett Lashley had said part of him being involved in this game plan was to help him on the mental side as well. And it's something Golik Jr. you've said 
when players are injured, they become isolated because you're not with the team all the time. And that can have an effect on the mental part for you. So he has tried really hard to make him a coach. He's always behind either Garcia or Van Dyke, helping them in the film room. Being able to come out here and call plays is one of them as well. And he said, hey, Derek's a guy that you kind of forget about. You have to worry about the mental side because he is so tough. But because of that, I have to check myself. And remember, I have to check in with him. Said he was going to give it two to three days to kind of say, you know what, I got hurt. I'm upset about it. And then he attacks the rehab, the surgery, and everything that's gone along with it, as you would expect a competitor of his nature to do so. So running clock here in the fourth quarter. And, and during our, our talk with the coaches this week, it was very important, Mike. And I thought it was, it was important for them to point out, like, what do we do to make sure he doesn't feel isolated from the team? And he's learning a different side of football that perhaps he didn't look, he's never seen before. It's a challenge for teammates also because during spring football practice, especially if you're not a player that's at DeGarrett King's level, a guy who is going to be the surefire starter as we see a flag down on the field after the play, you're working towards a goal of trying to get yourself an opportunity on field. I was a guy that had to wait a long time to get my playing time in college football. But knowing you've got someone on the team you're close with, Pass interference. trying to take care of them. In Defense that way. number 40, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. But again, when you're used to being the leader and the quarterback and, and on the field and leading your guys and, and, and being the, the player that the offense is centered around, to have that art just taken away out of nowhere is difficult. And so now it he's is. had to adjust himself to learn a different way to be around the team and lead and do so unselfishly in the quarterback room, teach some of these young guys the offense. He's learning a different style of the offense. I think this speaks as much, if not more, to De'Aaron King's leadership than we knew about him prior to this. And, and Manny Diaz said it, this, this team needs him as a leader. He's an important voice for the rest of the team, certainly what he's used to, but they're also used to seeing him out front, being able to count on him, and met mentally the difference that makes as a player, knowing, all right, if things hit the fan, Derek is going to get us out of some trouble. We talked with their coaching staff about what they need to improve on this year, taking fewer sacks. And they said, part of that is on the quarterback, part of that's on King, but you also know he's going to get you out of about as many sacks as he might take because of his spectacular ability. We had a cold run play there from De'Eric King. Parrot the ball carrier. And Ryan Risk, the quarterback now, fourth one we've seen today. You talk about being engaged on a sideline for anyone, Matt. This is also the point in the game. Lots of young guys getting some yep. of their first real action, meaningful action. This time as an older player on the sideline, when you're getting up into that fourth, fifth, sixth year, is when you can take these guys aside, when you can cheer them on and support them because they're working just as hard, if not harder in some instances, during spring ball, trying to make a name. This is where you pay it forward for that next generation of players here. Sam Fishman on the tackle, and you hear it. And it, it, look, it's football cliche, but it's true. Mental reps. How do you get your mental reps? Most of these young guys, a lot of the time, that's all they get is mental reps. But here they get to get it in the game. And, and from this point, once the spring game ends here on ACC Network, the coaches will then take the tape from today and throughout all of spring practice is their foundation to watch what they did well, what they need to improve on. Because once you get to fall camp, that's where you're preparing to play a season. And that's where you're preparing to win jobs. And you're right, it was pointed out to us as a reminder, the spring football game is on TV, so there's value in that. It's an opportunity in Hard Rock Stadium, which they haven't always been able to be in during this spring, to go ahead and cut it loose in that environment. But of the scrimmages they've had, and this is the third scrimmage technically of camp, their coaching staff said the other two were probably the more important ones where we're doing a little more schematically, where we're throwing more mentally at these players. This is a clean operation you want to come out and present to the world, but the work has already been done in the prior 14 practices. Jalen Harrell on the coverage there under four minutes to play. And then here, here's a good camera shot of what you have. You have a young quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, with De'Aaron King, them talking over offensive ball plays. It's vernacular, it's understanding, it's signals. It all, look, every, this is fun, Mike, but there's a purpose. 
there is and seeing it happen at full speed the way it turns up when you get in this environment when you put on that game uniform instead of the practice uniform and being able to process that walk through the machinations and what a spectacular catch that's two for Keyshawn Smith he just scored with Jake Garcia now he gets another touchdown from Ryan Risk what a throw what a catch and again what an opportunity for these players to show themselves late in the spring game just great body control at the end. You see the delivery here from Risk, but then watch him shield the defender with his body, come back and make the catch and take it all the way to the ground. Those are and fundamental parts of receiving. That's what you're working on in this spring game environment. So Ryan Risk to Keyshawn Smith. Young guys making the Time veterans out. on the sideline love it. It's De'Ara King calling ball plays. Two for two with touchdowns. We're going to wrap the Miami spring game. Miami spring game, Mike Golick Jr., Matt Barry, Chris Budden. Gets the ACC's NCAA men's soccer automatic qualifying match tonight right here, ACC Network. On the ESPN app as well. Number one, Pitt takes on number four, Clemson at Historic Riggs Field. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. I was just at Hard Rock Stadium in January for the National Championship, where last season, perhaps one of the most trying and historic seasons in college football history because of the pandemic, we were able to get that thing in, which is a credit to the players and the coaching staffs and the administrations around the country for what they had to do. Now we hope, we hope this spring that the fact that there are spring games, we are headed in the right direction. And De'Eric King is certainly headed in the right direction for his future as a coach of what he wants to be when football's over. 10 pass plays, three run plays, two touchdowns. He's gonna hand his headset to Lashley afterwards. He'll be like, see that? My work here is done. Like, like it's even hard, coach. What have you been telling me about this entire time? Forget this vanilla stuff. He's out here slinging it all over the yard. Peyton Matoka back on to play quarterback under a minute and a half left. I let that one go. No whistle for the sack there, Golic Jr. That's a late blunder by the officials. It's a late blunder by the officials, and I'm sure our defensive-minded, defensive play-calling head coach will have something to say about that. What do you think of him going back to calling defensive plays? I think that is going to bode extremely well for Miami this fall. I, I think so. We know he spent time doing that under Mark Richt here from 2016 to 2018 and some great defensive units. The worry is always, does it take away from what you're doing as the CEO of the program, overseeing the entire team? But I think the trust he has in Rhett Lashley to really handle what's going on on the offensive side of the ball and get the most he can, especially out of a unit that's transitioning this year. You lose your three great pass rushers to the NFL. Your linebacker core is young, starting to look for some faces popping here over the course of this spring. And so having his voice commanding that room, probably more important than it's been in a while. And if there is a year, as Matoka goes deep. Oh, good throw, good catch. D. Wiggins on the receiving end. So about 10 seconds left. It is a running clock. It's a good chuck here by Matoka. To say these quarterbacks we talked about so much, Van Dyke and Garcia, but Risk and Matoka have come in late in the game and said, no, we're willing to go deep too, coach. That's a great teammate, I mean, they, Dierick King, giving his young guys a chance to go out there and shine. But they really stuck to that running clock. I thought for sure they let him get one more play in with it inside the red zone. But that'll do it for the Miami spring game. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a minute, go through our final thoughts. Jake Garcia, the star, we'll talk about that. We'll put a bow in Miami spring game and look forward to the season for them. Coming up right after this. Did you know that Geico's whole 15 minutes thing? <laughs> that came from... Afternoon, 19 of 25, 252 yards and two touchdowns for the star. True freshman and early enrollee making his case to back up De'Eric King coming this fall. As you take a look at Miami's schedule this upcoming season, there is one notable omission here, Mike Golick, 
and that would be the Clemson Tigers, which on this slate alone, they open up with Alabama, which is obviously a huge opening game, non-conference, Michigan State non-conference. But you avoid Clemson, North Carolina at North Carolina is going to be tough at Florida State. There's no reason why the Miami Hurricanes shouldn't be the favorite, probably along with North Carolina and Sam Howell, to come out of the Coastal. A veteran quarterback presence and a full offseason 